Okay, to consider, continue our consideration of ion sound waves, that's what we're trying to, to derive, so maybe I should have said that, ion sound waves. Um, you remember that we had previously, and I'll just use, the, it's a, should, would have been the same thing if we had allowed free charges, but uh, we effectively had that uh, the potential that we obtain is equal to the free charge perturbation that we might have, might introduce into the system, divided by k squared epsilon hat of k and omega. And uh, basically, if we set epsilon to zero, what we are doing uh, is we're trying to find the normal modes of the plasma, that which effectively requires no, no excitation. So that's the next thing we will do. So let me, so we'll just set epsilon hat to zero. So what is our epsilon hat? Or what does epsilon hat equal zero give us then? Well, what you do is you, of course, just, just multiply up here. And um, I guess I'm going to need most of the space. So we'll do this as omega squared minus k squared gamma ti over mi. Uh, and that is going to be multiplied by 1 plus 1 over k squared lambda to by electron squared, which represents um, electron to by shielding. Remember the 1 here, let me come back to that. The 1 is vacuum. The 1 over k squared lambda to by squared is electrons, and this last term is the ions. Uh, and so, and this will then give us minus omega pi squared, and that's all equal to zero. Okay, now it's convenient to write this to multiply up by k squared lambda to bi squared to make it one plus k squared lambda to bi electron squared, all divided by k squared lambda to bi electron squared, and then to take this and multiply it up, to, up here, okay? So if we uh, do that, then we obtain a dispersion relation which looks like omega minus k squared gamma ti over mi times then uh, 1 plus k squared lambda to bi electron squared and then minus something and that something is omega pi squared and then I've taken this in case that the k squared lambda to bi squared in the denominator and put it up over here. So I just get k squared lambda to bi electron squared is equal to zero. Now, um, this is get, getting pretty close to the form in which I want to uh, look at all this. And namely, what I want to do is to um, work out what this business is here. So let's just notice that omega pi squared times a lambda to by electron squared is equal to um, what, so to speak? Well, omega pi squared is just, um, remember we defined it as n naught i e squared over m i epsilon naught. It's almost the same as the electron plasma frequency. You just relabel the quantities into ion plasma frequency. And the Debye length squared um, is equal to uh, e squared n naught e over epsilon naught te. So we can obviously cancel out the epsilon naughts and the e squareds. Uh, what about the n naught e and the n naught i? Well, in equilibrium, uniform, they're supposed to be equal, so we'll cancel out those as well. So lo and behold, this factor just becomes then Te over Mi. So if we kind of put all this together then, we can write all this as omega squared minus k squared gamma Ti over Mi times 1 plus k squared lambda to by electron squared and then minus and now I'm going to choose to write it as Te over Mi k squared 
is equal to zero. But I would like to remember, okay, that TE over MI can also be written in, let's call it obscure notation, as omega PI squared times the electron to bi length squared. It's not very illuminating to say that, but it's just a combination of things that comes out. Okay, now you can already see out of this that if I look at, if I somehow had small TE or something like that, I'd have ion thermal waves. If I didn't have these terms, I'd have omega squared is equal to TE over MI, and that'd be some sort of ion sound speed type of thing. So you can already see that I'm just going to get some form of ion sound type waves out of this. But it turns out it's got some rather interesting structure. Let's just say it that way. So let's look at this ion sound dispersion relation. Um, and in particular, we want to look at some limiting cases. Now, the first is we'd like to take um, k squared lambda to by electron squared, much less than 1. And this then says consider k's, or wavelengths, or k's, short compared to k to, or long, you know, well, small compared to k to by, or wavelengths long compared to the Debye length. So you remember it's not within the Debye shielding distance, we shield out individual particles, but um, potentials. But over a longer distance, we get only the collective polarization responses. Okay? Now, in that limit, it turns out the one, uh, or the vacuum, dielectric constant epsilon naught is not important. What's happening is we're getting this adiabatic electron response, and that's the big part. Um, but anyway, so what happens is in this case we have dynamic uh, device shielding. What time scale would that dynamic device shielding be? Well, truthfully, it's of the order of 1 over omega PE so-called plasma period. And what was that? It was about picoseconds. Okay, so it's very short that that happens. Now, in that limit, what I'm effectively saying is neglect this term entirely, okay, and keep only this term and this term. But let's combine them together, and then what my dispersion relation becomes is omega squared is equal to k squared times, and then we get gamma Ti plus Te over Mi. Is this the same as what I would have gotten for sound waves in air? How about close? The difference is that the ions are responding three-dimensionally as if they are um, uh, fluid responding three-dimensionally, but the electrons are responding sort of one-dimensionally because they're adiabatic. So it's almost like just adding two temperature or having a two fluids that I add together, but it's a little bit of difference in that the electrons are responding adiabatically and the ions in a fluid like um, way. Um, now, if I had kind of kept a little bit of k squared lambda to bi squared, my TE would have been, let's just say, divided by notice. Um, I, I could have just taken this factor under here. And then I would have just had a 1 plus k squared lambda to bi squared. But I sort of don't really too much want to worry about that. Um, well, I will in a, in a different way, but anyway. <laughs> um, so what we typically write this as is we write it as k squared v sound squared, where by v sound we mean that which we have in a plasma. So this is v sound squared is... Uh, is, or V sound is equal to gamma Ti plus Te all divided by the ion mass. Okay, what happens? So that was the K lambda to bi, and we definitely have dynamic uh, uh, shielding. Uh, what happens in a little bit different limit? That is to say, suppose K lambda to bi is rather large. So now we're talking about wavelengths on the order of or shorter than the Debye length. 
uh, and we sort of get out and get away from dynamic Debye shielding. Okay. Well, just going back to this dispersion relation, then you can um, see that now I should neglect the one compared to k squared lambda Debye squared. Um, and so let me just sort of do that. So what you get is omega squared minus uh, k squared gamma ti over omega i all times k squared lambda Debye electron squared uh, and then minus te over mi k squared is equal to zero. Um, and now it's at this point that it's more convenient to write this as k squared lambda Debye electron squared times omega pi squared because remember that was the other form in which we could write that quantity. Um, and, and then if you do that and divide through by the k squared lambda Debye squared, what you then get is omega squared is equal to, well, let me do it a little bit here, omega squared minus uh, k squared gamma ti over mi, and then minus... Uh, omega pi squared is equal to zero because the two k squared lambda Debye squared factors cancel out. So what we find in this case, so this was equal to omega squared, uh, is that omega squared is equal to omega pi squared plus um, gamma ti over mi times k squared. So that's our large K lambda Debye, or w around within a Debye shielding cloud, and this is the longer wavelength than the Debye shielding cloud. Um, and again, these sound waves are rather similar to those like the air in this room, except that now they're being carried by electric disturbances and, and adiabatically shielded by the electrons, but, but uh, carried by ion flows, okay? Ion, ion density perturbations induced by the electric fields. Okay, um, so that's, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I wanted to write this as one other way, so I guess I can write it as omega pi squared times, I could make it 1 plus k squared lambda to by ion squared uh, times this factor gamma i over 2. Sometimes I'm writing gamma i here for, to realize that this factor is for the ions alone. Okay, so now what I'd kind of like to try to do is uh, summarize all of this in one of these dispersion diagrams and then talk about the various waves that we have. And I want to put on both the electron plasma oscillations that we mostly derived but, and talked about last time, but a little bit at the beginning of this lecture, and also this case here uh, of the ion plasma oscillations. It's either an ion plasma oscillation for large K lambda Debye or an ion sound wave for uh, small K lambda Debye or long wavelength relative to uh, Debye shielding. So if we do that, uh, so this is the dispersion diagram. And now it's conventional in these things to only plot that which has to do with um, positive frequency so we won't, or, and positive k. So we won't bother with the other ones. So this is k. And this is omega. So first I'll put on the electron plasma frequency. So here's omega pe. And you remember that wave was kind of a bell-shaped uh, or almost parabolic, but anyway, not quite. And then it went up to some finite slope sort of. Um, and let's see, I want to show that the, the slope or the uh, asymptote on that particular one, so let's show a slope with a dashed line here. Um, the slope of this line was the square root of 3 over 2 times the electron thermal speed. So next what I'd like to do is 
talk about these ion plasma oscillations. And by the way, where is K lambda Debye on here? This is the point at which we have um, one or K, what's called K Debye, which is uh, one over the electron Debye length. Now, is the electron plasma frequency greater or smaller than the ion plasma frequency? Well, if you remember, omega PE is proportional to the square root of 1 over electron mass. Omega PI is the same thing, except it's square root of 1, oh, one over the square root of the ion mass. Ions are, you know, much more massive than electrons, so omega PI is really down by the square root of the mass ratio, factor 40, from omega PE. So truthfully, I can't even plot it on this graph, okay? You couldn't see the 2% here difference, okay? But we, we always exaggerate a little bit just so that we can, we can uh, see these things. So let's put, a, let's put an omega PI on here. And just remember, I'm cheating on you a little bit. It, it really shouldn't be that uh, small. And uh, now, remember, we had these uh, results okay, that if I had small k lambda to buy, I just had an ion sound speed uh, on this, okay? And now, uh, that is to say, uh, my, my waves had a phase velocity of the sound speed. Is that sound speed the same as the electron thermal speed? Well, again, the sound speed is 1 over the square root of the ion mass, and the thermal electron speed is 1 over the square root of the electron mass. So therefore, there's a square root of, of uh, mass difference in the slope, namely the ions have a much smaller slope, much smaller phase velocity. So pragmatically, for small k lambda to buy, what happens for the ion waves, okay, is they start coming up linearly proportional here. And then after k lambda to buy of about electrons, about one, then they asymptote, if you look back to our other formula here, uh, to the ion plasma frequency. And so we'll draw this kind of out here where they're going to asymptote to. And now I sort of didn't tell you about an implicit assumption that I'm going to make, which is that TE is much greater than TI, in which case uh, there's another point out here of about 1 over lambda DI. And after that, this curve turns back up and starts for the ion thermal speed alone. And so it sort of does this. Uh, and now I need to connect that one back all the way to the origin. Well, I could, but anyway, let's try this. And so the slope of this line is the ion thermal speed, but the slope of this line is more, well, is governed by the electrons. So the slope of this is the sound speed, which is approximately equal to Te over Mi because of the fact that I took uh, Te much greater than Ti. So let's now label uh, some various parts of this. Um, and, and by the way, I, I, I should kind of start drawing some, let me just draw some wiggles on here, um, because when you get into these effects, uh, these regions, let me just say that, um, Kinetic effects are important, but we're not, you know, our fluid models, we don't, we don't take that into account. Uh, so it limits this analysis truthfully. Okay, so let's label various regions. Where are electron plasma oscillations on this graph? Well, they're right here, okay? Electron plasma oscillations, and they would be at exactly zero, uh, I'm sorry, at exactly the plasma frequency, electron plasma frequency, except at finite K, there's a finite electron thermal effect on that, and that whole thing is called the Bohm-Gross dispersion relation. Then there's, so that's a wave carried fluid-like in the electrons. 
Then down here, we have the ion sound waves. Okay. And that is a wave carried by adiabatic electrons trying to shield out ions which are carrying the wave. And then some people call this region the ion plasma waves. And because, you know, it's at the ion plasma frequency now. And finally, these, uh, uh, these shaded regions are where kinetic or thermal, sometimes depending on which way we're talking about it, uh, effects are important. So the idea then uh, is that this is kind of the summary of the type of waves, electrostatic waves, we can have in uh, a simple infinite homogeneous plasma with no magnetic field. Now um, remember that the phase velocity was the slope to any one point here and the group velocity was the tangency point at any one point, right? Well, you can see that I've got an awful lot of interesting differences between phase velocities and group velocities, and they're often not the same. Only down here in the ion sound region are they the same, it turns out. Okay, so that basically completes what I want to say about electrostatic oscillations. Uh, next time what we'll do is we'll start into talking about electromagnetic oscillations still with no resident equilibrium uniform magnetic field, but rather we'll still, we will allow for magnetic perturbations and electromagnetic waves with, uh, you know, magnetic, well, magnetic components and having a uh, carrying energy in the E cross B direction, pointing vector direction, and so forth. So that's what we'll do next time. Uh, that's about middle of, uh, of Chen's chapter four.